Welcome WDAP radio listeners to Straight from the Couch with Dr. Lovely. I am your host, Dr. Lovely of the Lovely Lady Magazine, where we come to you and speak to you about life, love, relationship, spirituality, and so much more. Where the doctor likes to speak life into you, our WDAP radio listeners. And I am so glad to be able to be here with you on today, speaking life into you and so much more. And on today, I would like to speak to you about a very common subject or phrase that I know you've heard so many times. And that phrase is, everybody can't go. And I know you've heard it so many times, and it means that whenever we are on this journey in life and um, whatever it, it is that we may be doing or experiencing, everybody can't go. Everybody is not going to be partaking in it as much as we may want them to. Everybody is not intended for the journey, for the destiny, or the plans that God has for us. One person can be the reason things are not quite working out. One person can be the reason why those plans won't seem to come together. One person can be the reason why that dream or that project failed. One person can be the reason for all the trouble that one may be experiencing. One person can be the hindrance to your greater blessing. And we may not always view the people that are in our lives as the cause and effect, but in all reality, some of the same people may negatively affect us, therefore, temporarily suspending growth and development with us in so many ways. We may not see our finances being drained. We may not see or really notice that our mental state or our emotional state being drained. We may not see that our cup that is supposed to be running over is running empty. And that is because of maybe the people that we have that are in our immediate circle or that is in our midst that is not supposed to be moving with us. God himself will not permit any movement when the people moving with us is not supposed to be. God will show the signs and will also allow the storms. And the storms will come so that we could see and we can experience. And sometimes it's, I can't say that it is God that is, is doing it. People themselves will show you exactly who they are. But we have to be smart enough to pay attention to what they are doing. And sometimes they their actions will speak way louder than the words and their actions will come upon us and cause so much havoc and so many storms. And those are the things that we need to pay attention to. And those are the people that we need to understand that they just cannot go. We have to be very careful. A lot of those who enter our lives, especially when you have a greater plan and purpose in your life. Some people or some of those people are on a mission to purposely destroy the plans or the purpose of God on your life. Now we know that they cannot do it, but some people are on a mission to do it. They will try and and, and in trying and us allowing them to be there way longer than what they should. Because we know that people are in our lives, some of them are just supposed to be there for seasons or reasons. And when that season is up, and when that reason is up, we supposed to recognize that. But we'll allow them to stay longer than what they should. And sometimes it's us having compassion and trying to be nice, but we must still use wisdom because when God has a plan and a purpose for our lives, 
the enemy has one too. So we have to be careful and the people that we allow to be in our lives, they will use whatever manipulative tactics possible to deceive you. Second Corinthians 11 and 14 says, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. That's a deceiver for you all day long. Genesis 3 and 1, that old serpent, he is more crafty than any other uh, animal that was created or creature that was created. And that's the snake. Okay, so we have to be careful with the snakes that enter our lives. Because one thing about a snake, that uh, snakes it will shed its skin up to four times a year. And a younger snake, it will shed its skin uh, every two weeks, rather. And the reason that it sheds in the first place is because of the parasites that's attached to its skin. So sometimes people that even are entering into our lives, that come in a form of deceivers, that come in the form of snakes that are in our lives, they too are like parasites that will attach itself to us. And what a parasite does is causes disease. And those type of people can attach Um, themselves to us, can attach themselves to our visions, can attach itself to our ministries, can attach itself to our dreams, can attach itself to the things, to the try to attach itself to the plans of God and get you all messed up mentally and get you messed up spiritually to get you all thrown off course. So we have to be careful with that. But that is one of the reasons why the snake itself it actually sheds the skin now the new skin with the snake it actually is growing right under the old skin so before the old skin is even shedding the new skin is growing and that and that's 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 something that's almost like being two-sided and that's like a a, a person you know being um being double minded or being a person that's having two types of personalities. And when you're dealing with a person that has a deceptive type of personality, they will present something else to you. Why underneath they are something else at the same time. So those old snakes, the old skin will still be there while the new skin is 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 forming so again it has the ability to be two things at the same time just like a lot of the snakes that have entered into some of our lives but even though that that snake may shed its skin it's still a snake no matter how many times it sheds its skin in a year or in a week it will still be a snake So we have to just be careful that how many times they try to transform themselves, how many times they try to present themselves to be something that they're not. They're still what they are underneath. So we have to learn how to be um, use our wisdom and our intuition and not be deceived by the things of the enemy and by the and by the people that enter into our lives. These people are not intended on going to the place that God has. And some of these people are users. They are there because they feel like they can drain you. They can take from you that you're kind and that they can just use you. So you have to be careful and be conscious of those type of people that will enter into your life to just take, 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 take. Our our cup is supposed to be running over. But if we turn our cups over and we can't pour anything out, 
because we've given everything out or somebody has taken, then we know that we have the wrong people that is uh, hanging on to us and everybody can't go. Because everybody is not meant to be part of the destiny, be part of the vision, be part of the ministry, be part of the plan. You don't want everybody trying to attach itself to you like a parasite and infect the whole vision and infect the whole dream. You might have some excellent ideals. You might have some things that you've done that was great. And simply because that one person simply because that parasite was uh is, was holding on to it god can allow uh anything to go further with it doesn't mean that you're not going to be blessed but sometimes we just got to take an inventory and we have to take an inventory of people it doesn't matter how good they are at something they might be even better at deceiving you so you just have to be very very careful at what we allow and again use our intuition and 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 use our wisdom and make sure that we are paying attention and try things up against the word and the spirit of God. It's also important to understand that some people themselves are not in the right place with God to partake of the blessings that are on your life, the place that God is getting ready to take you, the elevation that is coming with you, and all of the things that God is, the doors that God is getting ready to open for you. And even though you love some of these people, and even though you desire to help people, and even though you want to take everybody up when you go up, it, it may not be the season or the right time for those people because, again, those people are not ready for the blessings of God on your life. And as long as they're not ready and we're still trying to carry them along or drag them along with us, nobody is going anywhere, not in God's eyes or at least not without a fight. Let's take Jonah, for instance. Now, we all know the story in Jonah 1 about Jonah and the whale and being swallowed up by a great fish. I don't want to talk about that. What I want to talk about is, is, is mainly that Jonah disobeyed an order that God had told him. He told him to, he gave him a directive and he told him that he wanted him to do something in particular, to go to a particular place and do something that he wanted him to do. But Jonah was disobedient to God. And because Jonah was disobedient to God, he decided, well, actually, he got mad and he was rebellious. And he says, hmm, well, I'm not going to do that. And he just didn't believe God was who he was. So what he decided to do is instead of going to the place where he was supposed to do, he jumped on a cargo ship and he went in the opposite direction someplace else so or he was trying to go someplace else so he thought that he was just going to continue uh on his merry own way doing what he wanted to do and see what the crew members did not understand after they s allowed Jonah to get on this boat and get comfortable and be down in the bottom just sleeping and relaxing until he got to his final destination. They did not realize that when they signed up to just do their job, which is to get the cargo that they were being paid because this was their job and they were being paid to transport this cargo and 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 um they were being paid to transport Jonah cuz he had bought a ticket to go to where he was going right so they wasn't aware that Jonah had been disobedient to 
to the voice of God. They wasn't aware that Jonah was running away from a responsibility or something that he was supposed to do. The crew members was not aware. All they were doing was their job. All they were doing was what they were supposed to do. But in the meantime, in between time, they got caught up in Jonah's storm. Because while they were on the boat or on the ship, a storm arose. And at first, there was no storm. And the meteorologist probably didn't even say that there was going to even be any storms that day. But what happened is because Jonah disobeyed the voice of God. It's because Jonah walked out of position. It's because Jonah was in Era, he dis- almost took down the whole crew and the whole ship with him. And see, don't you understand that sometimes people can be in error in their own walk. People can be in error in their own place and they can come walking up on your ship and almost take you down with them so that it is so very important that we still continue to know who we letting on our ship. So what happened next is the crew members, what was so it was incredible to me about the crew members is they didn't understand what was going on. Where did this storm come from? What was going on? They were afraid. The ship seemed like it was getting ready to sink. They didn't know what was going on. So this cargo, this precious cargo in which they were getting, they had got paid to transport. They just decided, we. I don't know what we are going to do, but we need to figure out how we are going to keep from drowning so you know the crew members said i don't understand what happened so they did something called casting lots well when in our day they might have been like uh say rolling dice and when they did this the lots showed that the culprit was jonah so they had asked jonah what have you done that is so bad that the storm has come upon us. And Jonah knew. He knew right then and there. And see, he knew that it was him. So what he had told them, he was like, it's me. It's I. Take me and throw me over. And when you throw me over, this storm will cease. And see, I got to stop right there. Because some people that will enter your life know they ain't right. Some people will enter your life know they are the culprit. Some people will enter your life and know they are the problem. Some people will enter your life and know they got a problem. And they know that you are trying to do the best that you can, living the best that you can, and going to be as good as you can to them. And they still will jump on your ship and try to ride your destiny all the way into a new change for them because they're trying to avoid the change that they need to make. So anyway... Jonah decided to say, just throw me off. I know I'm a problem. I know it's me. But let me tell you something about the crew members. The crew members, they, they, oh man, we can't throw this man off. We, we can't do this. They felt bad for the man. So instead of wanting to throw them off, the, 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 the cargo in which they were getting paid to transport, they decided to throw that off. So they was throwing off everything just to try to lighten the load of the ship, but nothing was working. So finally, they valued their own life. Finally, they took into consideration. I done threw away money. I done threw away. This is my job. I done messed up on my job. I done almost lost my life. I, I, I done messed up. And I done threw away so much trying to save this man. But I'm going to tell you, I can't do it anymore. So they had to make peace with what it was that they needed to make peace with. But they picked Jonah up and they threw Jonah off the side of the boat. And the scripture says that immediately the storm ceased. And see, 
Many of us know what happened from that point. Jonah was supposedly swallowed up by the big fish and and then the big fish held on to him and then it put him off on the on the seashore right where he was supposed to end up at so um he ended up in the belly of the fish for so long or whatever but the whole point to this is sometimes we will hold on to people and we won't let go and we'll feel sorry for them, and we'll let them stay longer than what they should stay. But we already know, now now mind you, they already know that they the problem. But yet, even though we found out they the problem, we still saying, well, and I don't feel like I should do that. Well, let me give them another try. Well, let me do, I, I, I just don't want to do it. But then when you realize that you are important. When you realize that this was holding you back. When you realize that that thing was pulling you down. But when you realize that this was my problem. That one person can be that reason. That things ain't quite working out. That one person can be that reason. That those plans don't seem to come together. And that one person can be that reason that that dream, that vision, or that project has failed. That one person can be that reason that you got trouble on every side. That one person can be the reason for your storm. That one person can be the reason or the hindrance for your greater blessing. When you get to that place. And you realize that your life. And your mission. And your travels. And your destiny. And your ship. And where you're going. And who cannot go along with you. Is more important. Than what you have to do. Is you got to say. Get off my boat. And whatever it is that's on your boat or on your ship and that's holding you back, you've got to get rid of it. So sometimes you got to tell people, get off my boat. You've been holding me back long enough. It's time for you to get off my boat. You broke my heart and I allowed you for too long. It's time for you to get off my boat. You've drained my finances and I only tried to help you, but you've done nothing to help yourself. It's time for you to get off my boat. I've been trying to be a blessing to you, but you ain't never tried to be a blessing to me. You've got to get off my boat. You've brought me nothing but trouble ever since you've been around. You've got to get off my boat. It is time for the things that mean you no good, that is not supposed to be on the ship, to be tossed off the ship. It is time for you to get off my boat. If you're hindering my ministry, if you've become the parasite in the ministry that is 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 drawing blood from the people that is there and and I and won't nobody stay and if you've been the common denominator of all of my problems you've got to get off my boat i can't allow the parasites to grow any longer making things sick bringing illness and mental pain and anguish any longer but it's time to get off my boat. Everybody can go. And everything is not meant to be a part of your destiny. So whatever it is, it's time to get it off of your ship. I hope I've been able to encourage some of you on today. And giving you some things to really, really think about. Because sometimes it's just one person that may hinder it all. 
But you know what? Even if it's two or three or four, it is up to us to realize who or what it is. And we have to make the necessary changes in our lives. I know a lot of times that we may say, oh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings or I just don't want to make anybody mad at us or I don't want anybody to dislike me. But it's better for you to obey the voice of God. It is better for you to do what's right for you because you've tried to do what's right for everybody else for so long. And it's gotten you nowhere but stagnated and hindered. So I pray that there is no more stagnation. And I pray that there is no more hindrances. And I pray that you realize on today who can't go. And you will get them off of your boat. And just a little sidebar. Even if it is your own stinking thinking, your own manipulative ways, or anything about yourself that cannot enter or cannot go into this next season, you may need to get that off your boat too. So it's it's not as much always as that one person. Sometimes it may be that one thing. So we have to take an inventory of even ourselves and examine ourselves and say, in this next season, I know everybody can't go. But now show me everything about me that can't go. And what is it that I may need to change? This has been Straight from the Couch with Dr. Lovely. And I thank you so very much, WDAP Radio listeners, for tuning in to me again. And I just want to encourage you to um, remember to take an inventory also of yourself and ask yourself, what is it about me that can't go in this season? What is it about me? That needs change. All right, this is Dr. Lovely, and I will see you again or talk to you again real soon. Have You've a been listening day. to Straight from the Couch with Dr. Lovely on WDAP Radio. Tune in again with me again next week. For more information, contact me at the Lovely Lady Magazine at gmail.com. How did I get here? Let me just think about it. I don't want to be here. And I don't want to think about it. I really messed up. In my heart I feel so afraid. But I gotta tell the truth. Cause I don't want to stay this way I used to have a lot of friends But now they all talk about me Now I'm here all alone Lord, can you comfort me? I know I'm not a perfect man And that's why I'm down on my knees Lord, I'm really begging you, cause I really know that you can turn my bad to good. You see, I done, done a lot of wrong, but I give it all to you. You can turn yeah. my bad to good. And I done slipped up in sin, but I give it all to you. All my faults, all my sins, all my Lord, here I am again. I 
Really need to talk to you I heard that you can change me And make my whole life brand new I'm sick of living in the past Don't wanna do the things I used to do I want a real relationship I wanna be committed to you I'm done playing church, Lord I really wanna live for Christ Just tell me what I need to do I really wanna do this right See, I'm not trying to play games I'm not trying to play games I don't wanna live alone No, 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 no Yeah. 
came to take its place, you got that new thing. New thing, it's funny how when you come through with that glory, I start to look just like you with that glory. You change me, yes you do, always. In my room, shadows, though they loom, I still see your heart. I was thinking I could stay, cause I come.
And there's nothing else I can do But sit right here and be still And wait on you Through sickness, through pain I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus Wait on you, Lord Wait on you forever promise I know that I'm gonna wait on you Hello, this is Dr. Lovely of the Lovely Lady Magazine. Join me on WDAP Radio on Sundays and Wednesday evening on my show, Straight from the Couch with Dr. Lovely. And you can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Dr. Lovely or the Lovely Lady Magazine.com. And also, you can reach me at the Lovely Lady Magazine at gmail.com. Vendors and bookers, get ready now for the 31st Taking It to the Streets Crusade Rally Weekend and Festival, August 17 and 18, in the entire Martin Luther King Park. Start time is 11 a.m. You know the drill. Lots of stuff going on. Some great activities and some great giveaways. Uh, also, a wonderful health and awareness tent. Kids zone second to none. Back to school items. Just wonderful. Vendor Alley, international and local foods, uh, and so much more. National and local recording artists. Uh, call me now. Anita Williams. 716 891 4760. That's 891 4760. Be in our ad book, uh, vend, use a shelter, also volunteer for this wonderful community enhancing event. 31st, taking it to the streets, August 17 and 18, Martin Luther King Park. Uh, also, please know that our sponsors will be announced at a later date. In the meantime, you make sure you're ready for taking it to the streets, August 17 and 18, Martin Luther King Park. You better not miss miss this one. I think I... You do. You're the beginning. And- 
You can say it awesome, 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 breathtaking. 